Hi guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin and today we'll be working on a double bit axe restoration. I was fortunate enough to pick this axe up from a yard sale in West Virginia for $27. It's a true temper Vulcan double bit axe uh, with the original handle on it, which is really cool. Um, unfortunately, this handle does have some, uh, a spot that's been broken off probably from an overstrike uh, when someone was swinging the axe and missed and hit here. So the cheeks here have been snapped off. So I, it's pretty secure, but I really not, I don't really trust it. Just, you know, it's not something you kind of play with when you're swinging an ax over your head. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the handle off. I'll remake the handle from scratch. Um, there are some really kind of cool things about the handle. It has the original True Temper uh, stamp burn onto it as well. And it has some, some small rivets or nails that someone put into it at one, at one point as well, which is really cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that off. I'll cut the head off and remove the wedge and all and, and then rehandle it the same way it was and doing my best to kind of keep the same size. This uh, True Temper Vulcan, this head um, on it, you'll see it says True Temper and Vulcan. It doesn't say Kelly work. So a lot of times, a lot of these heads you'll find are True Temper Kelly heads, um, really good heads and I have a couple of them myself. This one doesn't say Kelly on it, which tells me that it's from after 1949. So it's a post 1949 head. That's when the True Temper and Kelly company stopped using the Kelly name on their axes, on some of their axes. So I know this is post-1949, which is fine. It's still great shape, great head. Uh, it's got perfect, the edges are perfect on both sides. There's no chips at all. They're even almost still sharp, so I'm really not going to have to do mu too much work from it. Probably just take a, uh, a small um, sharpening puck and sharpen up the edges a little bit. Let's go. We'll get started, and uh, let's head down to the shop. All right, first thing we need to do is remove the handle from this head. So I'm gonna use a coping saw and I'll cut it off just below the eye. We'll work on getting the, uh, the wood out from the eye. So I'm just gonna cut just below the eye. I'm gonna get too close because I don't wanna scratch up the eye with my saw, but close enough that we'll be able to maybe able to drill out and pound out the, uh, the remaining bits of the axe that are left inside the eye. I do really like that this axe was secured with just a wedge and not metal wedges as well. So I'm gonna to try to do that as well when I get to that point. Uh, just do a wedge instead of wedge and cross wedges. I think it'll hold fine. So we're gonna start drilling out now in this wedge and see if we can get that out. See if we can get her out. You can see it's starting to slip down. The old head slipping down. Being stubborn. Yep, 
should go in now. Almost hitting the bottom, bottom and out. All right. So you can see we're almost there. There it goes. All right. All right, so I just finished up getting the rest of the wood out of the eye. And then we had a couple pieces that were kind of stuck in the side, so we got those out. And uh, it's ready to take it to the wire wheel. You can see already here, just with uh, a few minutes of wire wheel, and you can see the difference between the two sides, how nice this looks once you get off all that surface thrust. And the wire wheel does a great job on that on the grinder. good I mean that was maybe 15 20 minutes of wire wheel and like I said this one started out in really good condition it didn't have a lot of pitting in it not a lot of rust just a little bit of the surface so not much we just uh, took that to the wire wheel and got it all cleaned off it's still a nice really nice edge so uh, we'll head back over to the bench and uh, start marking off how we're gonna set this on the handle I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a file and put just the smallest chamfer on the bottom of the eye here that way when it seats down on the axe handle it'll sit really nice and tight right now it's got a little bit of like a sharp edge so i'm going to file that out and then we'll uh, start cutting out the wood handle The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start working on this handle. So this piece of hickory has a really nice grain structure. Um, here at the end it's 45, that's the piece I'm going to use. So even though the grain is running 45, it runs the full length of the handle. So ideally it would be parallel to the, to the blade, but a 45 degree angle is really strong. You can see here, this one had a 45 degree angle as well. So also you really want to focus on your grain structure running all the way down. So as long as your grain's not running out or running down out of your piece of wood, then you have a plenty strong handle for the length of the handle. So I know that this piece has the grain running all the way, not gonna have any tear out or running out, so it should be good to go. I'll measure out, so this handle would have been 30 and a half inches. I cut a little bit more off, so probably about there. So almost exactly 30 and a half inch handle plus the height of the head, which is just over three. Plus we wanna add a little bit more on top and make sure you have plenty of wood to be proud of the head when you seat it all the way down on the cheeks. So we'll add maybe two inches or so more. That'll put us about 35 and a half. So I'm just gonna round up to 36. So we have plenty of wood to work with. And uh, I'm gonna start cutting it out. Handles rounded, obviously. So when I'm tracing around, I'm trying to just keep my pencil up vertically. And obviously, I can't trace this spot here because that's where the 
piece is broken out from the overstrike. All right, I'll just check the width of this now against my original me measurement of two and seven eighths. You can see I'm jumping up to the one just because I can't get to the end with the hook. So go up to the one, so I have to go up to three and seven eighths. And you can see from the one up to the three and seven eighths, we're still over by about an eighth. So we have plenty to spare when we're taking wood off both sides. So I think at this point, I'll just extend these out to my full width. And then we'll cut that out along here. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so just past the uh, bottom of the handle, so I'm actually gonna cut along this line on the bandsaw, so that's plenty now. We don't have to worry about trying to cut cross grain on the bandsaw, we can come down this edge and cut the side out. do is we're going to call it a night tonight but tomorrow we will mark this handle off uh, try to find the best great grain orientation draw it off on here on the edge and then we'll uh, we'll take it outside and on the draw horse and we'll start uh, taking material off of this and doing our final shaping we'll see you guys in the morning Good morning guys today we are going to be working on shaping the handle We'll be using the draw horse. This design is based off of a uh, design from the Homestead Craftsman, so I'll put a link to his video in the description below. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is marking off the width of the handle. So we have the general shape of the handle cut on the bandsaw, so now we need to orient the handle width-wise. And uh, fortunately, I have a lot of wood to work with. This is an eight-quarter hickory piece, so the grain orientation is really good on it, but I can make the handle even stronger by just tracing the end of this handle down and following the grain the way that it goes from one side to the other. It's not perfectly straight down this piece of wood, so because I have so much wood to work with, I can kind of skew the end to one side on there and then the fawn's foot on this side a little bit and follow the grain perfectly straight, so it'll make the strongest handle possible. So we're trying to start closest to the end where the eye of the ax will be. That's the part that really matters the most. So I wanna make sure I get that material down first and then I can go back in and work on the handle. Um, the handle's not as, I mean it's important, but it's not as important to get it perfectly right because we want the, the uh, part of the handle that is all the way at the eye. It's gotta fit really nice and tight into the eye of the ax head.
mark at the top of the head, just so we know what we're working with. And that's actually leaving us with about an inch and a half, two inches. This is not gonna be the, the most accurate line, but it will give us a reference. So there is the reference, and I'll come outside of that by maybe an eighth of an inch all the way around. take this inside of the bandsaw now and trim off the extra part on the handle. That way I'll have a nice straight line so I can eye down, make sure my eye is straight. So I'm using the round side of this rasp right now because I need to cut into the shoulders and I need to cut a concave depression. So I want the shoulders to be wide all the way around. The ax head will slide down on and it'll sit on those shoulders. And so this part of the wooden eye needs to be concave. So use the round side. Then when we're doing a spot where we're rounding over the top, use the flat side. Also, you want to just take your time. Don't try to rush it. Just take small passes and check your size often. All right, so I'm just now getting the end of the eye to the right size into the ax head. So what I'll do at this point I'm going to stop on using the draw horse. I'm going to move inside where I can clamp this into my vise nice and tight, make sure I have no movement on it, and then work the rest of the way down to get the eye to fit really well. Just keep working it down until it fits.
You can see there how clearly the pencil helps to mark off where your eye is touching, where you need to keep removing wood. Good, we're fit all the way down to the shoulders now. Um, once I actually fit it with the uh, hanging the head the proper way, it'll slide down all the way the rest of the way. So I'm gonna take this off now and then we will move on to shaping the handle. First, I'm gonna remove some of the material with the draw knife just to get down to an octagonal shape and then we'll move over to the bench grinder. So occasionally when you're using your draw knife, well, when you're using your draw knife, you want to be sure that you are um, careful about the grain run out. So you get a situation like this where you start pulling some material off with the draw knife. You want to flip your draw knife around and work against it so that way you don't dig down into the grain and dig too far into your handle.
All right, so I've gotten down uh, to the majority removed from the handle now. I'm starting to feel really nice. Um, and it's close to the original handle, which I'm going for. So um, close to the width, close to the uh, thickness as well. So I'm just going across the grain in long strokes and that will help to even out your rasp. So if you keep your strokes long instead of doing short strokes like this, if you do your long strokes, it takes off a, an amount across the top all the way as you move down. So you get an even amount of wood removed and you get an even surface. Gonna make a quick, uh, kind of just a line around where the uh, fawn's foot is on the original handle, just so I have a little bit of guidance on taking down some material. All right, we're back in the shop again this morning. Uh, I worked a little bit more on just finishing up the uh, axe handle. I have a couple friends here visiting today. My friend Sean and his son Emery are in the shop. Uh, what we'll continue with, I, um, I've kind of worked down with the rasp. I'll continue with uh, the scrapers to kind of put a nice surface on the outside without using sandpaper. Gives a little bit more texture and a little bit more purchase without the, uh, the raised grain from the rasps. All right, we're gonna fit this on just to see where it's sitting. It's nice sitting all the way down on the shoulders. I'm getting contact all the way around the wood and the eye. A nice tight fit all the way around without hitting it a few more times and really getting to sit down on there. Um, we'll mark off about an inch or so above the eye. Uh, let's 
see, we'll mark it off here. And I'll cut this off and then we'll cut the kerf. So I'm gonna cut the kerf down um, about three quarters of the way down the eye. Um, you don't wanna go all the way down to the bottom, but this will be the, uh, the kerf that the wedge will fit into. And I kinda of just mark a general line down the middle, close to the middle. All right, so now we're about three quarters or so of the way down where the head will sit. With that. So the kerf is still above the eye by about maybe three quarters of an inch or so. So we'll get that on. All right, so next step we need to do is cut our wedge. I'm gonna use a piece of cherry. I'd like to get some contrast in the head, so I'm gonna cut a piece of this off and then we'll, we'll uh, sand it down to get a nice wedge. We'll just mark out the width of the eye. So I'll just come to my kerf it's here. So get a general mark here, maybe go up a little bit more. Make sure I have plenty of material. So I still have my mark, my B mark on the back, so I knew which way the head would have been hanging the head. So I'll go ahead and fit it on, snug it up just a little bit, make sure it's straight. All right, now we'll do the final hang. This time we really want to. Give it some good wax. And you can hear it. I can hear it when it's really seated. It'll start feeling and sounding like it's not gonna go much further. There it was. far down as it's gonna go. Give it another one more shot. All right. 
ready for the wedge. It's not super critical to put glue on your wedges. You can do them without it, but I like the little bit extra security that it gives. So I'm going to start it here, get it going, and I'll move it to the floor so I have a nice solid surface behind. So you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of a split in the wedge, but it's almost maxed out as deep as it's going to go. So it's going to have to work. So it's still letting me go a little bit deeper. I have a second crack that just started, so I think I might stop there. It's pretty snug at this point. I can kind of feel it just stopping. go. All right, so I've marked about a quarter inch or so, so I'm going to go now and trim off. I'm going to leave this broad, leave the whole uh, wedge and the top of the eye hanging over the axe head. I think that helps to, uh, the, the wood mushrooms out above the eye and uh, can really work well to keep your axe head on nice and tight. All right, so the wedge went in really well. I did uh, split it on the top, but it's it's so tight in at that point, it was like really tight, really secure, so I'm not worried about that at all. Um, the next step is to oil the handle up, but first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna transfer these marks. So I have on this existing handle, the one that came off of, it has these little nails that were in it. I didn't know what they were there for originally, but then I went back in and I measured them and these two are exactly a foot apart, and these two are exactly six inches apart. And I love that idea of having those markings on the handle. Cutting wood, chopping things down, you know, those measurements are the most general measurements you have, one foot, half a foot. So I'm gonna head and uh, we'll transfer that on. Kind of an interesting way, I'm gonna heat up a nail and burn it into the handle.
The handle's all done and shaped, wedged on, so it's time to oil it up. All right, so this edge is pretty sharp already, but I'm gonna touch it up. Um, I have a sharpening puck. This is a Arctic Fox from Liam Hoffman. It has a 250 grit side and a 400 grit side. We'll go ahead and touch it up and get it nice and sharp. So you have two different sets of angles. Usually one will be a wider edge. You see here, this one is maybe a quarter of an inch all the way. This one's about an eighth, so I'll be able to tell. This one's gonna be much sharper and finer for cutting wood, and this one will be a little bit steeper for uh, my utilitarian side. all oiled up and all sharpened up. It's time to take it outside and see how she cuts. All right, guys. Well, the axe works really well. It's held the edge up the whole time, which just a uh, you know it just shows that it's a good quality axe head. Um, hasn't slipped at all on the eye, so it's good. It works well. I uh, appreciate you guys watching this video. Um, if you liked it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see some more coming up, we have a few more videos coming up in the uh, near future. So go ahead and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.